Boards, that would be nice. We've got Pat with us. Pat's in the house. Yay! It's been many months, right? Yeah, we're so glad to see you, that you're healing there almost 100%. All right, that's good. Mandy, you're here. Good. Nice to see you. We're grateful for that. Have a beautiful day, and then we got a new married couple in the back. Just be careful, don't get too carried away in the back. I, I can see you, they can't. <laughs> and you saw the pictures of them, it's up there as well. So, oh, the next slide. Oh, the next one, there we go. Yeah, yeah, it was a lovely wedding, and uh, they're back, and that's a wonderful. So we're grateful that you, they're here. Yeah, and so we're many involved in school back into the schedule or schedule or whatever, and it's kind of the joys of getting back. Sometimes it's good to get back in sync, and other times it's like, all right, here we go again. But some of you probably aren't back in school these days. The, the school of life, right? If you see the stones and you, you have, is it asthma? That you have? Yeah, so that's that's unfortunate to do that. We heard that Emmy, our friend Emmy, took a fall this week. I just found out a few minutes ago, and that she was laying there for a day or two. Two days. Two days. Yeah. So she's living. She's with her daughter. So yeah. So that's un yeah. So that you're, she's related to you, right? Somehow. She had an aunt or something. My aunt. Your aunt. Yeah. So, I didn't know that she fell, but uh, she didn't break anything, but I think she's... Bad bruised. Bad bruised. No, bad bruised. Oh, dear. We ought to pray for her. A couple announcements. The board meeting this afternoon, four gentlemen. And then, uh, ladies, you're going to pig out on Friday here, right, with a, uh, a luncheon, right? Yeah, the pizza. So that should be fun, and hopefully I may even crash that. <laughs> Yeah. Oops, I forgot my lunch. <laughs> oh, he's, it's a guy thing. <laughs> so our call to worship, it's a little bit different. As Bo comes to read it and open in prayer. So we're in Jacob, um, Jacob, Yaakov, and there's some significant parts towards the end of his life where he has a blessing over each of his 12 kids. And it's it's incredible. It's it's. It's not only just a blessing, but it's prophetic. And they're going to be the 12 tribes of Israel. But Judah is highlighted and chosen especially because it's going to be the great the tribe that will have David, and then we'll have who's going to be born through the tribe of Judah. Christ. Jesus Christ. Kind of, so 2,000 years before, this is the blessing that... Uh, if we can say old man Jacob at 147 years of age blesses on just he's doing all the all the kids but this is unique to Judah and that's what we're going to read and open in prayer good morning good morning good, good to see everybody it's a good morning and uh I'm happy I'm married <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's exciting uh, join me this morning in our call to worship. Judah, your brothers shall praise you. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's sons shall bow down before you. Judah is a lion's cub. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He stooped down. He crouched as a lion and as a lioness. Who dares rouse him? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until tribute comes to him, and to him shall be the obedience of the peoples. Binding his pole to the vine, and his donkey's colt to the choice vine, he has washed his garments in wine, and his vesture in the blood of grapes. His eyes are darker than wine, and his teeth whiter than Please pray with me this morning. Lord, thank you for today. Um, I'm so happy to be back uh, and with this family of believers. Um, and we just thank you for this place and the chance to come and worship you this morning. Um, 
Lord, we just pray that you'd be with uh, all who need you this morning as we think of Emmy and uh, the, the fall that she had and any others that uh, are just in need of your uh, healing hand and your guidance and your care. Um, pray that you'd be with them this morning. Uh, again, just thank you for this opportunity to, to come and worship you as we, as we sing. Uh, I pray that our uh, voices would be pleasing to you, a, a joyful noise, and um, as pastor comes and gives uh, your word, I pray that you just speak through him and um, that we would be refreshed, renewed, um, and just, just take in your word and um, be ready for the week ahead. We love you, Lord. Again, thank you for this time and this place. We invite you in here now uh, to be with us as we worship. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, yeah. I forgot to mention that our friend Noemi has had a bit of surprise the last uh, week or so. She was one of the 1,200 people that was released from uh, her job uh, in the State Farm, the farmers, one of those. She was one of 12, 1,300 that was released. Uh, she knew a little bit about it a week before, but it comes a bit of a surprise. And, uh, some of Jennifer's teachers' spouses were part of that. They just liquidated, was it 12, 1,300 jobs? 11%. 11%. Yeah. So, unfortunately, she said she was going to take an early retirement, and, uh, and that helped as she was uh, preparing for that. But that's a bit of a surprise, and that was the one, but uh, continue to remember them in prayer if you were as well. Ah, uh, like the, the wheels turning. That's great. So we're talking Jacob the schemer, huh? And his life as he was always constantly fixing. So I know this is dangerous. Danger to do this. But how many of us have eaten at Das Essen House? <laughs> uh -huh. And what's your favorite pie? What, raspberry cream? <laughs> What's that? What's your favorite pie? It doesn't. I mean, they, they're known for their pies, right? Besides all everything else. Never met a pie I didn't like. <laughs> yeah, uh, I like their chocolate's good. I like cherry. I mean, yeah, I'm with you. There's just all kinds of good. Then you get a piece. Well, that's down in Indiana, right? And in that area, uh, there's also a place called Goshen. Uh, that name obviously comes from Goshen, from Egypt. So not only go over the seas, but go back hundreds of thousands of years. At the end of Jacob's life, he finds himself in Goshen, Egypt. Now think about that. After 147 years of age, now they don't have pie there. <laughs> and and uh, he's going to eat well. But he finds himself in, in Goshen and back in Egypt. So let me just read to you in chapter 49. Um, I won't read the whole thing, but this, I'm going to start from the end of his life now and go there. Because we started the first half a couple weeks ago. And Jacob called his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you what will happen to you in the days to come. And so he does the blessing on each one of his sons. Previous chapter, uh, Jacob, Joseph's there. Yosef Ishkadol, you know, this, the second command of Egypt brings his two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. He blesses them. Now, blessing is something else. It is prophetic. It is significant. And he's praying over them. So, and when Ephraim and Manasseh come, old man Joseph, or uh, Jacob, what does he do? He still had that bug in him, right? To do things a little bit differently. He crisscrossed the older and the younger to mess with them. He does that. But in verse 49, chapter 49, the other 12 were there, and he blesses each one. We read Judah, which is significant. Now look at the end of the chapter. All these are the 12 tribes of Israel. These, the, This is what their father said to them as he blessed them, blessing each with the blessing suitable to him. And then he commanded them and said to them, I am to be gathered to my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave that is the field of Ephron and Hittite, and the cave of the field of Machpelah, east of Mamre, in the land of Canaan. 
which Abraham bought with the field from Ephron the Hittite to possess as the burying place. And there they buried Abraham and Sarah his wife, and there they buried Isaac and Rebekah his wife, and there I buried Leah. The field and the cave that is in it were brought, bought from the Hittites, and when Jacob finished commanding his sons, he drew up his feet into the bed and breathed his last and was gathered to his people. Whoa! So I don't know the sequence and timing of pulling up his legs and done, but that was pretty common. He was done, time to go. The Lord took him and gathered to his people. That's an interesting phrase that they talk about. So let's review just briefly uh, the lifeline of, of our friend Jacob. Okay, and so here you can see Oh, it's a little Isaac's here, so he's going to be the oldest, 180 years old. And here's Jacob, and he's born. His son was e his brother was Esau. He's the one that grabbed the heel, the schemer. He is going to live to 147 years of age in Goshen, uh, Egypt, and we'll show geographically all the different moves that he had. In the meantime, you know, he's the birthrights and, and dressing up and leaving and going to. Uh, to his uncle Laban, working 10, 20 years for two wives, ended up with four, 12 sons. He's coming back. He, missed, he, he meets with his brother Esau, and uh, God prepares him. We talked last time, and we'll look at that too, the significance of, of God interacting with this schemer who was taking off, and God just working in his heart and, uh, and bringing him to a place. I had to show this again. He had 12 kids. Can you imagine that? I don't imagine four wives, let alone 12 kids. Uh, and it doesn't, and I'm just throwing this out there, it never mentions any girls. Well, it does later because there's, there's a, a rape that goes on, right? And so the, the, the girls aren't even mentioned. There could have been a lot more uh, to that. So the, the marriage challenges, he thought he was going to get his favorite, got tricked, right? His, his father-in-law was a schemer too. And so he ends up with two wives, and ends up with four women that he had bare children with. He had in-law issues with the, his, his father-in-law and kid issues, because they're going to, even Reuben, his eldest, would sleep with his midwife, or his uh, handmaid, and uh, it, you know, it wasn't pretty. And so here we got, just where we're at, we're at Abraham, and Isaac, and now we have Jacob. And then he has Leah and Rachel and their servants, and these are the 12 tribes that are going to come as a result of that. I'll show a little bit more. So that's with you. And I have to show you, these are Jacob sheep. That is a, that is a breed in uh, UK. Two sets of horns and spotted. Makes sense. I don't know where they come. I don't know if it came from the Middle East, but I thought, that's pretty cool. There were a lot of times, and this is review, that God prompted and worked in Jacob's life. We talked about two big ones last week. So when he had to leave, flee for his life, his brother was going to kill him after the blessing. He goes and he has this, uh, uh, he has this dream. Now, I threw that in there. This was, you know, Jacob's ladder. Uh, whatever has he slept and saw God intervening and saying connectedness and promise to him. Here's another angels descending and descending so he's leaving i mean he's kicked out of the home he has nobody to go to he's got to go hundreds of miles to an uncle he's never met and he is destitute and god meets him with a dream and promise that says he's going to return and so it's that's pretty amazing so 20 years later after four wives 12 kids uh, being snookered by his father-in-law many times ending up with wealth comes back, got to meet his brother who he's estranged with, right? He doesn't sleep well, and at night then God comes and wrestles with him. That's an old classic picture. Can you see that? It, it's almost like God, God, son, just chill. Let me, let me, listen up, you know, but he wrestled all night with him. Here's a better picture. You can see that, you know, here, Jacob just got this, <clears throat> he's got to get out of him, and finally all night, he asks for a blessing, what happens? Touches his hip, dislocates it or something, where God gave him a physical handicap, to remind, just kind of a reminder of his physical need to trust, his need to trust him, and he moved on. And so we looked at this as just kind of, maybe the reason why God wants us to wrestle is so that we can discover our name, 
that is who we really are deep down in what we have been created to be. Because at that time, he calls him Israel. Israel means striving with God. I don't know if I'd like that name. Israel sounds cool, but that means he strove and he wrestled with God. This is another interesting quote. Until you wrestled with God, you'll not know the depth of his love and the power of his hand or the grace of his heart. Is there a lot of truth to that? Anybody wrestle with God? And you say, who hasn't? Yeah. So here's some of the theological things that I want to talk about here. This, this is the new part. So how many have noticed that there's road construction going on? Anybody lose your sanctification with that? <laughs> this week, I mean, they were messing up. For the last couple weeks here, that they're working on it, and then they... They did that nasty tar stuff and put gravel on it, you know? And then it gets all over and throws, I mean, and you kind of wonder, especially, and you're driving anywhere, and they're going, oh, my word, you know? Uh, what is MDOT thinking? Have you ever wondered that one? And yet, deep down, you kind of know that they have a master plan. <laughs> and that after so many years, these roads have to be repaired or rebuilt. Now, on a few, of the new additions, I wondered, what was the guy thinking? <laughs> you know, the off-ramp went like this, down a cascade, that's a crazy off-ramp. It works, but you gotta know what you're doing. I want, as we look at Jacob, I mean, God's doing tons of road work in his life, and he's just nothing but detours and hassles and struggles and wrestling, and yet God has a plan and a purpose for it, huh? So the theological significance, number one, is he, Years prior with Abraham, will make the bless you and bless you, curse you and curse you, make you a great nation, all the worlds will be blessed. And Jacob has a son, Isaac, a promise at 100 years, at 100 years of age, and Isaac has Jacob. We call them patriarchs, the fathers. And Jacob's going to have, out of his 12 sons, a significant one of Joseph, Yosef, Ishkadol. And, uh, uh, he's gonna, and God's working because his plan is to develop a nation. And you know what? God's going to do it in a crazy way. And we're going to close with Isaiah, but you know when I say, I say, my ways are not your ways? Duh. <laughs> Have you figured that one out? I have not. He has plans and purposes. So if you were going to build a nation, why in the world would you choose these guys in the first place? Let alone take them into Egypt for 400 years and be slaves. Have you figured that one out yet? And that was the plan, to, of course, then the whole thing with Moses and the law and the Passover and the plagues and coming out triumphantly and 40 years of wandering and the, the conquest of the land significant, not only then, historically, but for each one of us spiritually as well, being saved and redeemed and moving on. So the Abrahamic covenant, Abrahamic covenant redemptive plan of God, the, the Messianic line of Judah, which we read, that is significant. Uh, we don't do too much with Old Testament. Huge, even in the future. Everybody read Revelation? Whether you do with the passage literal or not, 12,000 from this tribe, 12,000 from this tribe, 12,000. And the prophets, they're still talking the millennial period, this area that each tribe's gonna get. It's still significant, even though that they have been you know, since 722 B.C., the ten tribes of the north have never really been together. And I don't know how they're going to do it now, but God's going to work there. So that's significant. The staging, 400 years of slavery, establishing a nation. And this word that we don't use too much because we don't, you know, you heard the word covenant theology, but the word remnant is a big important word. The covenant and a remnant. God, through all these crazy ups and downs of people and through the ups and downs of Israel, ups and downs of this, there's a remnant of people God chooses. Even in the midst of this, we're going to, that Jacob, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I disliked, hated strong. Malachi and Revelation talk about that. How do you deal with that election of God? And yet it is the providential moving of God that he has a chosen and they move through. So that's an interesting concept. So let's move, yeah, 12 tribes. And there are a lot of different ones, and it's a big one today here in the middle. Is the tribe of Levi is going to be the priestly tribe, right? So they don't inherit any property. 
they're provided their priests. And then Judah, the line of Judah, the prophecies there. And later on, Balaam and Balak will be a prophecy of Judah too in the scepter. And, and it is interesting study that which jo uh, Jacob blessed really panned out true. Uh, surprisingly, how they, what, uh, what would the tribe and some of their issues and their challenges. So it's pretty amazing as they went that way. Some geographical ranges. So uh, let me, you know, sometimes when people retire, they end up in warmer places. You know, I don't know. I'd go north with the snow. Pray for me. <laughs> You're mad, yeah. By yourself. By yourself. <laughs> yeah, that is true. I don't think my, my favorite wife will not join me. <laughs> but the segue is Joseph, uh, 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 Jacob is all over the place. So he, he's, he's going to be the green line. So he's in this area and all the hassles. He's many years there and he finally has to leave after ripping off his brother, getting blessed. He takes off to Bethel. That's where he has this dream. And he goes all the way to Haran. I mean, that's, that's hundreds of miles away. Never met. And that's where he's going to be 20 years. End up with four wives, 12 kids. And he's going to come back now and meet his brother. And that is, you know, God's divine blessing interaction there. And then he's going to stay there for many years. And then he has 12 sons, right? This guy named Joseph and the family. You know, I don't think, you know. Did they have the model family? <laughs> what did they want to do to Joseph? They ended up saving, you know, selling him. And uh, Reuben stepped in. That's an interesting study because he messed up pretty royally. And at the same time, he did something. He did pretty decently to try to save his, his son, his brother. But you could probably get it too that, you know, Joseph was a bit of a bragger. I saw this vision and everybody's bowing down to me. And he's this, this young kid that's just spouting off. They had enough of him. Yet, in the midst of all of this, God, did, and we'll talk about this next week, he ends up second in command of Egypt. Again, my ways are not your ways. And he is there to redeem um, the 72 people that will eventually come with Jacob back to Goshen, and they'll be there for 400 years because of the famine. You know, interesting, God puts famines in our lives, get our attention, sometimes they move us, sometimes they trust them. We could, we could play with that a lot, think about that. But Jacob, so he's at, at, 100, so at 137, 140 years of age, no, 120 years of age, he doesn't go to Florida, he goes to Egypt. Now, it's pretty good, because his son's second command, he's 12, but his generations after that would have a hard time. Anyway, there's a lot of change that goes on in his life. Here's some thoughts of spiritual information. That, uh, so, we bought this clothes basket and all of these, and I just want to show you, this is sorting out life, one load at a time. I thought, well, that's perfect. Have you, you know? And all the missing socks that are hiding somewhere, usually behind the dryer or in the corner somewhere under a bed. Those are missing. So here's how we're trying to sort this out. I mean, these are great Sunday school stories, the stories you can't make them up. And yet they're still blessed of God in the midst of all sorts of weird things and trying to sort out what God is doing because it sure doesn't make any sense humanly. And yet God's working. So number one, as, as you look at Jacob, who was a bit of a schemer, obviously. You talked about he held the heel and, and, and the conflict with his mom and the tensions of husband and wife and brother. I mean, and all of this is still part of God's divine plan. And it's, I think even at the end of his life, he's still trying to figure some things out. That, and, and here's a real positive, wonderful thing. It's, you know, when Joseph was announced dead as dad, he just, he just emotionally just froze. You see, if you read into the scripture and read between the lines, he just lost his, his wife, he lost his, his son, and he was just kind of, just 
out, out of sorts and in suffering and grief. And yet in the divine providence of God, there would be a surprising reunion. Huh? Isn't that amazing? Can you imagine after all those years thinking my son's died? They saw the coat and the blood on it and, and dealing with that. And then, hey, by the way, we really messed up, but your son's alive. And he saves them. A little bit picture of redemptive history. Right? So he's sorting this out. So these spiritual transformations, let me just say a few things. Let me go back to the spiritual things that are going on. This faith training is, is, is tough. Anybody can give testimony to that? There's wonderful times that God blesses. And then there's other times, maybe, maybe by our choices or somebody else's or just circumstances, you go, God, what in the world? And yet the trust and to believe that he knows everything and plans everything and purpose, the theology of suffering and trials. But here's another part, especially this wrestling with God thing. I think there's this word called brokenness. That there is a time that sometimes God just has to sit down and say, son, daughter, um, I need your attention. And, and you know, before you hear me, some, some of these circumstances and situations are going to be put into your life so that you rely on, you're wrestling, you're striving against me. Even though you may mean well and don't understand, you come to surrender, I surrender all that we sang before this. But this concept of brokenness, I mean, I can think through times in years gone by where I didn't understand why I'm broken, <clears throat> and yet just like Paul, when I am weak, then I am strong. So in those seasons, when God just, everything seems a mess, or you're broken, and he knows how to heal, he knows how to work through the circumstances, he knows how to provide, there's nothing that comes through our life that has not been uh, agreed upon or allowed into our life. And that you trust him. And even when there's brokenness, loss, or grief, or whatever, election is a big thing. We don't know what to do in the New Testament. Election, predestination, foreknowledge, Calvinism, Armenia, there's some big, I mean, it's way above my pay grade, you know? And the mysteries of God bump against mystery. And yet, where God, where he says here, I love Jacob, I hated Esau. There's a lot to struggle with that there, but it's a remnant that he chooses, and Ephesians tells us before the creation of the world, he chose us in Christ. How special. Whether we know why he did or didn't with so-and-so, let's not worry about that. Let's be concerned about ourselves. That if he chose you and your name is written in the book of life, we rejoice in that. So this election aspect. And, and even in Joseph's life, at, the, at Jacob's life, he blesses Pharaoh. Pharaoh asks a blessing. So there's this 130-year-old shepherd from out the, you know, they talk about redneck. It's kind of how the, how the uh, uh, Egyptians considered people from Canaan. Redneck guy comes in at 140, 30 years of age and blesses the Pharaoh. Isn't that cool? And the blessings of the sons, and there's some interesting things how that panned out. So God is good. In the midst of so many things, we trust as he works. And the takeaway from Jacob and God working in hearts is a special thing. So let's uh, move on to... So we started a Bible study at Ambrose Ridge <laughs> this week with... Uh, Ellen and crew, and, and yeah, Harleen and uh, Joyce. Joyce was there, and two or three hours, six, we had a nice, we had, we'll do every other week there. So I go in the, in the elevator, go up, and there's the sign, get your God, <laughs> get your God on with Pastor Kirk. <laughs> oh, whoa, I don't know if I can handle this one. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, and we did have, we have a wonderful time with the ladies and study the word. Um, as, and as fun as that is, and, 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 a, and a blessing and encouragement as well, but get your God on. I thought there was something with that. Get your focus, get your perspective. Uh, that's what communion is supposed to do. And it, it, it kind of like the, the Max don't usually have this issue, but PCs, you got to reboot, right? Sometimes everything gets so all whacked up. 
no user error, I'm sure. <laughs> Reboot, recalibrate, refocus, get your God on. I had the response of pray for me at Ambrose Ridge. I don't know what they're expecting on this discernment. <laughs> uh, but we think about that going forward. Uh, a couple thoughts. Life is messy. Anybody have any? I know what God's people said. It does get messy. Some of the mess you created, some of the mess other people created, some of the mess just are. Health. Family dynamics. I mean, Jacob's going to have his oldest son, you know, uh, ancestral relationship with his wife, and they're going to kill his. When they're going to, the boys are going to kill one of their brothers, or they send him away. And you go, Lord, what a mess! He thought you had it rough. But God's work, in, He knows how to take broken lives. He knows in the midst of it, He didn't throw His plan off. Even though we're scheming and trying to fix things and plan, doing the best that we can. And, and I think of, too, how unlikely you and I would have ever chosen a Jacob. Right? And how unlikely you would have chosen your other people. You know, I've mentioned who guys in ministry went to. I think, how would that guy ever going to be a pastor? And yet, God chose him and used him on a mission or something. You know, God worked in the messiness. And here's another word I'll throw out there, staging. When you think about your spiritual life, there's a lot of, kind of a theatrical term, but there's a lot of staging. There's a staging the presentation to, that God moves providentially. He, heaven rules, Daniel says, even with the forces of evil working against it. But there's staging, he's setting a stage. Well, ultimately, what's the next big stage gonna come? Christ coming back, right? And setting up shop uh, and uh, eventually reigning and ruling and then all things new. But they're staging, even in the midst of chaos. So a couple of verses, and we need to read this together. This is Isaiah together. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Talk about an understatement. Isn't that something? I remember this verse years and years ago. Uh, 2025, they get a little fuzzy back there. But, you know, things were going on. A lot of my mind, we're heading up north. And we're going up and down hills. And I'm seeing a little bit of the road in front of me. And then from that, and then, then the sky and the clouds just kind of kept going like this. And that verse came to mind. I can see the road maybe half a mile in front of me. And it's a little bitty thing, and yet the skies, my word, as high as the heavens are from the earth. And that's his realm. <laughs> we live in this realm. He's in this realm. And he does things far beyond our abilities to know and understand. That's why living by faith. And so the writer of Hebrews chapter 12 says, and together, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. One translation used author and perfecter. But not this step, the founder of it, bedrock in Christ, and the perfecter. Bring to perfection. Uh, that word in the New Testament means to bring to completion all things new. Isn't that exciting? So we trust. Day by day, moment by moment, as we trust in Him. We're going to close in prayer and then sing Have Thine Own Way, 445. Lord, we trust you. It's easy maybe today to say that. You don't know what tomorrow holds. Or earlier this week, maybe there were things that kind of uh, rattle our chain. But we trust you. We are to live by faith, not by sight. And you've exonerated those that live by faith. And we, we acknowledge that sometimes that faith gets a bit thin, or it even can be shattered. So today, Father, please restore, as you're good at restoring those that are struggling. Just like with the good shepherd, you restore our souls and refurbish and rejuvenate. We need that today, Father. And we 
trust you, whatever the circumstance may be, that you're working and, and have plans and purpose, and we're, we're one of billions of people in the world, and yet you know us by name and have plans and purposes for each one of us. And so we ask that you bless as we trust you. And we thank, and we pray, Lord, that we would not strive against you. Help us not to scheme. Help us just to surrender and to trust you. And to under, try to um, be willing to hear your voice, that still, small voice that calls us and that leads us gently beside still waters in green pastures. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 445 in your hymn book, please. 445. 445. I think that's the way Jesus, I pray. Amen.